San Marino. Second smallest country on earth, enclaved by Italy, and the only place that has more cars than people. This tiny republic of 32,000 people is located on the Apennine mountain range, and is a mere 61.2 kilometers squared, or 24 square miles, and it also claims to be the oldest sovereign state and constitutional republic in the world. Let's start off with its origin. Founded on September 3rd, 301 AD, it was founded by its namesake, St. Marinus. St. Marinus' early life is not well documented, however we can start on Arba, an island located off the coast of present-day Croatia. He eventually left the island and moved to the city of Rimini on the Italian mainland, becoming a stonemason. This time is now during the Diocletianic persecution, the last and most severe persecutions Christians had endured in the Roman Empire. As you can guess, Marinus was a Christian and didn't exactly take too kindly to this persecution. Not wanting to sacrifice to Roman gods, or even worse, be forced to convert, he decided to escape to nearby Monte Titano. Monte Titano, harboring him, gave him time to start up his sermons once more. Eventually, he built a small church and founded the city, soon to be sovereign state, of San Marino. To be honest, if you can walk into a city, which is in a gigantic empire, which is also hunting you, and all people like you, and then create a city, and make it into an independent republic, well, you are the ancient version of a badass. Okay, back to formalities. As you would imagine, Rome disputed this and even launched a small campaign against it. San... St. Marinus fled to the mountains and lived out the rest of his days there. In his last moment of life, he uttered the famous words, I leave you free from both men. There is, of course, speculation on the meaning of words, but they most likely refer to the Pope and the Emperor, both of whom he considered to be abusive of their power and too dictatorial. These words, however, remain as inspiration for the microstate. Now let's fast forward to the Holy Roman Empire, also known as the First Reich. It's disputed as to whether San Marino was ruled over by the Holy Roman Empire, but in any case, it remained its degree of independence like any other part of the empire. Eventually, it forged relations with the papacy, and depending on who you ask, had the Holy Roman Empire, its lapdog, release the tiny republic, or just leave it alone. In any case, San Marino had the approval of the papacy, and was safe for the moment. Once again, fast forward to Napoleon's advances. If you took a European history class, you would know that Napoleon controlled almost all of Europe through alliances, conquests, and treaties. What role did San Marino play in this? Well, San Marino was almost annexed into the French Empire, but one man saved it. His name being Antoine Onofori, a diplomat who realized nothing would stop Napoleon, at least in Italy, and decided to become his close acquaintance. These two men forged a relationship, and Napoleon guaranteed independence and no French intervention. In fact, Napoleon offered to have San Marino's land expand considerably into the Italian peninsula, but when Mother Russia struck back, as it always does, San Marino decided to, to remain neutrality and declined any offers of land expansion. As Napoleon was usurped, the concert of Europe had developed and had dramatically changed the layout of Italy. Fortunately for San Marino, it was relatively unaffected by this at least in the short term. Then, in the 1860s, the long-term effects began to take place, as Sardinia, being ever ambitious, decided to unify Italy, and within a few short years, Italy was completely unified, with the exception of San Marino. San Marino was to be annexed, but thanks again to unrivaled foresight, they decided to harbor many people who supported unification. Giuseppe Garibaldi, conqueror of Sicily, honored the wish of San Marino to retain its independence. From this point on, San Marino played the Switzerland game, not taking any sides in any conflict, the notable exception being the American Civil War, in which San Marino felt so strongly of America's republic values and opposition to slavery that they even made Abraham Lincoln an honorary citizen. Sticking to the Switzerland game, when the concert of Europe collapsed during World War I, San Marino retained its neutrality. Unlike Switzerland, however, San Marino was forced by Italy to join the war effort, and San Marino complied sending 20 soldiers to fight, and opening a hospital to heal wounded Italian soldiers. Then, in 1923, San Marino became fascist. Of course, it never exhibited the same ferocity in minorities or extreme nationalism as in Italy or Germany, but it was still nonetheless fascist. Once World War II broke out in 1939, San Marino this time played the Spain game, retaining its neutrality while visibly supporting the Axis. Fast forward to New Year's and Benito Mussolini was executed. The fascist party in Italy crumbles, and in response, the German military briefly occupied it, before being liberated by the Allies in the Battle of San Marino.
For the rest of the war, support shifted to the Allies, and in 1945, San Marino had become a harbor of controversy. Even after the blockade of Eastern Europe, San Marino had become communist despite not being under direct Soviet influence. Despite controversy, it was left alone, probably because it was the only communist country to have democratically elected its communist government. Once that government fell in 1957, San Marino somewhat reverted to its pre-fascist state. It retained friendly relations with many nations and had several disputes with Nauru on who was the smaller republic. From then on, San Marino evolved into its current form, only making two major decisions. One in 1988 when it joined the Council of Europe, and another in 1992 when it joined the United Nations. Soon after, it adopted the euro as its currency. And that's basically the history of this remarkable nation, summed up in just a few minutes. Stay tuned for part two when I discuss the government structure of San Marino. This is Mr. American Mapper signing off. Oh, and by the way, don't forget, please subscribe to me. That way I get motivated to make videos faster. And plus, you know, I make more money. Bye.